So some days things just go wrong. Sudo Pika Hagemaru merges two genres together. Platformer and adventure game. And the guide I was following to get me through the brief adventure game segments had some pretty significant errors in it. And that resulted in me repeating some segments of the game quite a few times trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. I switched over to a video playthrough eventually and it got me over that hump, but it was a lot of my precious recording time lost. Surupika Hagemaru was originally a comic strip about the misadventures of Hagemaru, a little bald boy. And this Famicom game isn't the first game based on Surupika Hagemaru. However, the first one is lost media, and it's lost to the point where even pictures don't exist anymore. It was a simple game that Hudson created to use in the early elimination stages of the 1989 Summer Caravan series, their video game competition that toured Japan. This makes the Famicom Surupika Hagemaru the second game based on the franchise. But there is a wrinkle here. This game is not based on the comic. It's based on a cartoon that had aired shortly before the game's release. And the cartoon took the relatively down-to-earth adventures of Hagemaru and made them a little bit more out there. And then the Famicom game took that even further. To give it some American context, this would be like if there was a game where Charlie Brown fought aliens. And speaking of that animated show, it stopped production when Noriko Tsukase, the actress who played Hagemaru, died. And the ending of this game has a small tribute to her. The game has a subtitle, Mezezase Suruseko no Akashi, which could be roughly translated as Goal, the proof of Suruseko. Suruseko is a term from the comic for the family's way of saving money. And the plot of the game is that Hagamaru finds a certificate that proves that he is the heir to the throne of Suruseko, which is apparently also a thing in outer space. Look, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Anyway, he lost the certificate and now has to try to get it back. For the adventure game portions, it's the usual menu on the right hand side. The options change at every location, but usually you'll find things like talk and search. The puzzles here are more obscure than difficult. Like here you're supposed to buy a goldfish from this guy, and then walk it over to a pond where you drop it in, and the fairy there will turn it into a gold goldfish which you then sell for a lot of money. You will need to save a lot of money in this game. Visiting a store and buying a piece of equipment that you need to access the next action stage is really the core element here. And in the action segments, if you die, you lose money. You have infinite continues, but the cash is what you really need. There are several locations in town for you to explore, like the jungle, the pyramids, and a tropical island. Going to one of these locations and talking to someone, and possibly handing over the correct item, will send you into an action stage. Here the A button jumps, while the B button will make Hagemaru flip over. If you jump and then hit B, he'll smash into enemies defeating them, and the enemies will drop some cash for you. Most of the stages just have you go to the right until you reach the end, but in this jungle stage you have a one minute time limit. And there's also levels like this underwater stage, where for some reason, rather than jumping higher, you jump lower. Hagemaru can be hit three times before he's defeated, and if you choose to continue, you'll go back to the town map and have to move off of that location and then back onto it if you want to play that stage again. A useful thing to be aware of on the jungle stage is that some of the enemies drop 100 yen coins, and when that minute runs out, you don't die, you just get kicked out of the stage. That makes it the perfect place to grind up some cash. In Japan, Surupika Hagemaru is considered to be a pretty bad game, mainly notable for its absolutely absurd difficulty. And it is a challenging game, but a lot of the challenge comes from the fact that you lose cash when you die, and so you'll wind up repeating stages to earn extra cash. Honestly, the action stages are pretty good here. Not top tier, you're not missing out on anything by not playing it, but a pretty good platformer. But making the adventure segments revolve around getting enough money to purchase the correct item so that you could continue was pretty annoying. Though there were some jokes in the game that even I could appreciate, 
Like you can buy a copy of Jalico's Moero Pro Yaku at the shop. They'll only charge you 10 yen for it. But beyond that, I can't really recommend Surapika Hagemaru. There's not a whole lot here beyond the mix of adventure game and platformer, and it doesn't do either of them well enough to really justify playing it.